my Christmas tree is up. Does anyone else feel like that is a countdown to the end of the Christmas crochet season? Well, today I'm making more stockings. This pattern has stripes and a contrasting color for the toe and heel. You can hang it on your tree or your friends can hang it on their tree after you give it to them stuffed full of goodies. I'm using DK yarn, but you can use the yarn you have to hand. Just remember, a worsted weight yarn will make a bigger stocking and a baby yarn will make a tiny little one. You'll need three colours. I have sea green and burgundy for the stripes and fawn for contrast. A pair of scissors for snipping, a needle to handle the tails, and mine is impaling my long-suffering little sheepy here, and of course your crochet hook. I've got my 4mm hook, but please use the hook that matches your yarn. We'll start with colour one and make a magic circle. If you're not comfortable with magic circles, you can start with a chain four and slip stitch it together to make a little circle, the same way you do when you're making granny squares. If you're not confident with magic circles, I've popped a link up on screen for my magic circles tutorial. You can watch that and make the circle, then come back and join me for round one. When you have your circle, magical or otherwise, we can start the round. We're going to work in half double crochet, so start by chaining one to get up to height, then we'll put our first of 10 half double crochets into the circle. Yarn over, insert your hook into the circle. There are two loops on my hook here, plus two strands of yarn from the circle and its tail. Yarn over and pull up a loop. There are three loops on the hook, yarn over, and pull through all three loops. That's a half double crochet. We need nine more in the circle for round one. Make sure you work all of them over the tail of the circle. I'll leave you to do that. Pause the video and meet me when you have 10 half double crochets in the circle. Tighten up your circle a little to bring the ends closer together. We're going to slip stitch to the first half double crochet. If you have trouble recognizing your stitches, you can find the first half double crochet by counting back from the last stitch you made. Don't count this loop that was on the hook, count the V shape. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and ten is the first half double crochet. Insert your hook under two loops of that V, yarn over and pull it through the stitch, then pull it through the loop on your hook. Now you can pull on the tail to tighten up the circle completely. This will keep the circle closed while you're crocheting, but you need to sew the tail in to stop it from unraveling. Round two's also worked in half double crochet. We're going to double our stitch count to make the circle bigger. Chain one to get up to height. The first half double crochet goes into the first space, just here. Yarn over and insert your hook under two loops of that stitch. It's a little tight because it's the other side of the slip stitch. Pull up a loop. There are three loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through all three loops. Now work a second half double crochet in exactly the same spot. Just squish it in there next to the first one. We're going to put two stitches into every space for this round. So I'll get you to pause the video and unpause when you have 20 stitches. When you have 20 stitches, your circle will look like this. Notice the gap. I haven't missed a stitch. The gap is the top of the slip stitch join from round two. It counts as the other half of the first space we worked in. So if you work in the first space and into the top of the slip stitch join from the round below, you'd increase your stitch count each round, so we're leaving it empty. Next, we slip stitch to the top of the first half double crochet. If you have trouble recognizing your stitches, you can count back to it. Don't count the loop on the hook. Count these Vs. Count back and slip stitch to number 20. Slip your hook under two loops of the first stitch. Yarn over and pull through the stitch and pull through the loop on your hook. Now we can start round three, which is a nice easy round. Chain one to get up to height and put one half double crochet into each stitch, starting with this very first space here. I'll see you when you have 20 half double crochets and we'll finish the round together. At the end of round three, your circle will look like this. There's that gap again, exactly where it should be. Now we're going to slip stitch to the first half double crochet to finish the round. Remember that you can count backward to find it if you need to. 
Once you've worked that slip stitch, pop your work so you're now working around the outside and the tail from your magic circle is inside what will eventually become a stocking. We're actually going to cut this yarn as we're not going to use this colour again until we reach the heel. Leave yourself enough of a tail to do the weaving in. Pick up colour 2. My colour 2 is the burgundy. I've not tied a knot or done anything fancy, I've just folded the yarn to create a bit of a loop. I catch that loop with my hook and pull it through the working loop on my hook. Now I'm going to tighten this up a bit. Pull on the tail that you just cut to tighten up the loop above the slip stitch. I'll give you a look. Can you see that the loop has become much smaller? Tie your two tails together to keep it that way. Tie two simple knots. It's important that your hook stays in the working loop while you tie the knots or you will tighten up the working loop as well as the loop you're trying to tighten up. There we go. Let's head into the next round in this lovely new colour. It's again worked in half double crochet and we're going to chain one to get up to height. But we're going to put our first stitch in a slightly different spot. However, if this is too confusing, you can simply keep working each round starting in the first stitch as we did in round three. You'll just have a slightly less straight seam. Or you can do what I'm doing and skip this first space, skip this one and work your first stitch here. Just yarn over Insert your hook under two loops of that second stitch along and work a normal half double crochet. I'm going to leave you to put one half double crochet into each stitch from the round below. And if you're following along with me, working your first stitch in that second space, unpause the video when you have 19 stitches and I'll show you where to place your 20th stitch. Otherwise you can work 20 stitches in the same way we did in round three and join me to slip stitch join and change to the next color. I have 19 stitches. You have a choice. You can place your 20th stitch just here, which is actually the top of the slip stitch join from the round below, or you can work your final stitch in the first space that we skipped at the start of the round. I usually work mine in the first space. There isn't a right or wrong way. Just go with the method you're more comfortable with and stick with it for every color two round. If you're working in the first space, yarn over and insert your hook. Ignore everything that is between you and that spot and work a normal half double crochet. You might need to wriggle the stitch around after you've made it to make sure it sits properly. When you've placed your 20th stitch, we're going to slip stitch to the first half double crochet to finish this round. Whatever you did for this round, you're going to do for every round work in this color. So if you didn't skip the first space and you worked this round like you did round three, do that for every color two round. If you skip the first space and put your final stitch in the top of the slip stitch join, do that for every color to round. Or if you skip the first space and put your final stitch into the first space, do that for every color to round. We've finished round four, that means it's time to change color again. You're going to get really good at changing color crocheting this stocking. The color changes for stripes will get easier after this round as we'll have the yarn attached. So fold color three and hook it onto your hook and pull it through the loop on your hook. Next, we need to tighten up this loop in color two. To do that, we'll tie a knot, but this time we're not gonna cut the color two yarn. So you'll be tying a knot using the tail of color three and the working piece of color two. Make sure you keep the hook in the loop to keep the loop open. Pull on the color two yarn so the bit of color two that's visible above the slip stitch is pulled out of sight. Then you can tie two simple knots using the tail of the new yarn and the working piece of the yarn we've just stopped using. While you tie those knots, I'm going to explain how we'll handle the yarn when we change between color two and three for each round. I figure you probably aren't keen on the idea of cutting the yarn and weaving in the ends every single round. This is the inside of two stockings, both made to this pattern. There's this red and green one on the left and this one, which I'm making with you right now. We've jumped forward in time. When I made these stockings, I tried two different ways of handling the yarn when I switched colors. For this one on the right, for most of the stocking, I carried the yarn under my stitches. 
I worked the stitches in each round over the working yarn for the next round so it was held in place and I brought it out when I was ready to switch colours. For this stocking I did not work my stitches over the yarn. I just left the colour I wasn't using hanging at the back and I picked it up when I was ready to use it again. Both of these methods let you avoid cutting your yarn so you can use the same strand of colours 2 and 3 from when we start the stripes to the top of the stocking. But after doing this little experiment I've come to much prefer this method. I think it looks neater and the stocking is actually stretchier. This stocking isn't as stretchy because it has bands of tension running across it from where I carried the next colour of yarn around with me. I was careful not to pull the yarn I was carrying under my stitches tight but this happened anyway. The other downside of working your stitches over the yarn is that it uses more yarn and I think it isn't any neater looking. It might even look worse than the other method and it's definitely more effort. So I recommend you just let the yarn you're not using hang at the back of your work, minding its own business, and just pick it up when you're ready to start using it again. You don't need to tie a knot each round. We only tied knots with the first stripe of each colour because we were working with tails. Now that yarn's attached, we can start round five. When we use colour three, we're always going to work in single crochet. We're not going to chain one to get up to height because we've got a little height from the join. And for colour three rounds, we'll always work the first stitch in the first space. Let's do the first single crochet together. Insert your hook, yarn over and pull up a loop. There are now two loops of yarn on the hook. Yarn over and pull through those two loops. I will leave you to single crochet around the circle. Unpause the video when you have 20 stitches and we'll finish the round together. It's easy to see where you need to work the slip stitch because it's the first bit of color three. It's time for round six, so we need to change colours again. Drop colour three at the back, pick up colour two, yarn over and pull it through the loop on your hook. Next, pull that little bit of colour three out of sight. Just pull on the colour three tail and it will tighten up a little. And chain one to get up to the right height to work half double crochets. This is a half double crochet round and we're going to work it the same way we did round four. So I'm going to skip this first space and work my first half double crochet in the second space. Exactly where you place your first and last stitches depends on how you chose to work round four. If you need a refresher, open the description box and there are links to each round so you can jump back to round four to rewatch that part of the pattern. Pause the video here and work your 20 half double crochets for round six. Finish the round with a slip stitch and I'll meet you for the beginning of round 7 to show you again how to change colours and start the single crochet rounds. Time for round 7. Grab colour 3 from the back, drop colour 2, yarn over and pull it through the loop on your hook. Tighten up colour 2 by pulling on it a little. You don't need to chain 1 to get up to height, that little bit of height from the colour change will do. Work your first single crochet in the first space. The pattern for the stocking until round 11 is just a repeat of the two rounds we've been doing. A round of single crochets in colour 3, then a round of half double crochets in colour 2. I'll put the pattern for the rounds up on the screen for you. Pause the video here. I'm going to leave you to alternate between those two rounds until you've finished round 10. Unpause the video before you slip stitch to finish round 10. Pick up your colour 1 yarn again and fold it to make a loop. We're going to slip stitch with colour 1 to bring it back in again. I've left colour 2 and 3 hanging at the back. Slip your hook under the top of the first half double crochet of the round. Hook colour 1. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why I'm making that look so difficult. And pull it through the stitch. And pull it through the loop on your hook. We're not tying this to anything this time. We're just going to start working with it. So leave that tail hanging at the back with the tails from colour 2 and 3 and chain 1. Skip the first space, work a single crochet into the next stitch. If you'd like to, you can work your stitches over the tail of the colour 1 yarn, but that's totally optional. In the next space, work a half double crochet. In the next space, we're going to work two stitches 
The first is a half double crochet and then squeezed in there next to it, we're going to work a double crochet. Yarn over, insert your hook into that same stitch and pull up a loop. There are three loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through two. There are two loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through two to finish the stitch. So that's a double crochet. In the next stitch, we're going to work a pair of double crochets. Yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over and pull up a loop. There are three loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through two, two loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through two. And a second double crochet in that same stitch space. And in the next stitch, we're going to work another pair of double crochets. So we've got two pairs of double crochets. In this next stitch, we're going to work one double crochet and one half double crochet. That's the double crochet and in the same stitch, a half double crochet. In the next stitch, a half double crochet on its own. In this stitch, a single crochet and I'm letting the tail of my colour one drop now. Skip the next stitch entirely and slip stitch to the one after it. That finishes round 11. To start round 12, chain one and turn your work. We're going to work back in this direction I'll just shift the tail out of the way. We're going to start by skipping a stitch. We'll be skipping this first stitch here and working into this one. If you find it easier, you can count back from your hook. Don't count this loop on your hook. Count one, two, and work into the third. Work a single crochet there. and a single crochet in the next stitch as well. A half double crochet in the next stitch. In the next four stitches, we will work double crochets. In the next stitch, we'll work a half double crochet. A single crochet in each of the next two stitches. We'll finish round 12 with a slip stitch. To find the spot I want you to slip stitch, Find the first V in colour one and go one V to the right, slip your hook under two loops of that and slip stitch. Goodbye, round 12. To start round 13, chain one and turn your work. We're facing the right way again and we're going to start again by skipping the first stitch. So if you find it easier to look at it from the top and count backwards from the hook, count one, two, and into that third V, work a single crochet.
The next two stitches each get half double crochets. The next three stitches get double crochets. The next two stitches get half double crochets. A single crochet in the next stitch and we'll finish off the heel with a slip stitch. I'd like you to slip stitch not into the actual stitch but into this turning chain just here. Slip your hook in there and try to catch two loops and work a slip stitch. That's the end of round 13 and we've also finished the heel. I'm going to chain one to finish off with colour one. I'll pull that chain one tight in a moment to make a little knot. You need to cut colour one now, we'll bring it in again later. For round 14 we're back to working our stripes but this round isn't quite back to just normal single crochet. Start by inserting the hook into this stitch here. It's one stitch to the right of where we brought in colour one. It's the last full stitch of colour two. Hopefully it's nice and clear where you need to begin. Pick up colour three from the back. Hook that yarn, pull it through the stitch to create a loop and we'll chain one. Put one single crochet into this same stitch that we started the round in. The next stitch is called a single crochet decrease or a single crochet two together. It's a way of spreading one stitch out over two spaces. We're going to be working up this diagonal and down the other side of the heel too. And we're going to place stitches in a couple of places that aren't just the top of the stitch in the round below. But we do need to work in those spaces or the stocking will have a lot of gaps. So we're going to start our single crochet decrease by inserting the hook under this first visible V of colour one. It's the chain one that we started round 11 with, but as long as you know it's the first bit of colour one you can see, you'll be fine. Yarn over and pull up a loop. So far, it's just like a single crochet, but instead of finishing the single crochet, you need to insert your hook into this area here. I don't mind exactly where you put it, it's not a conventional stitch, so just do the best you can in terms of whether you catch one loop or two. Once your hook is in, yarn over and pull up a loop. There are three loops on the hook now, and you can see that the stitch is attached to two places in the round below. Yarn over and pull through all three loops. The next nine stitches are normal single crochets, each worked into a normal stitch. When you've worked nine single crochet, you'll be looking at the other side of the heel. We're going to work another single crochet decrease over this area here. Insert your hook, yarn over and pull up a loop. Instead of finishing the single crochet, insert in here. I only caught one loop and that's okay. Yarn over and pull up a loop. There are three loops on the hook. Yarn over and pull through all three loops. That was the last decrease of the stocking. We'll work the next stitch here. We'll skip this stitch that has the slip stitch in it and work a single crochet in this empty stitch. From this point, the round is easy. You're going to put one single crochet in each stitch until you're back to the beginning of the round. I'll see you there. This is what the end of the round should look like. Don't leave a stitch empty at the end of the round. We didn't start this round over a slip stitch. There shouldn't be a gap between your last stitch and your first stitch. 
Finish the round with a slip stitch to the first single crochet. It's time to bring back colour 2. Pick up colour 2 and drop colour 3, just let it hang at the back. Hook colour 2 and pull it through the loop on your hook. Tighten up the last bit of colour 3 and we can start round 15. This section of the stocking follows the same pattern as the earlier stripes. So I'll put that pattern up on the screen for you and leave you to alternate between colours, working this round in half double crochet and the next in single crochet and so on. I'll meet you at the end of round 22, which is the last round in single crochet and it'll be time to finish with colour 3. I've slip stitched to finish round 22. Now I'm going to bring colour 2 back in so I can work the last half double crochet stripe. So I finished with colour 3. Round 22 was my last single crochet stripe. That means I can cut colour 3 and I can tie a couple of knots with the tail of colour 3 and the working bit of colour 2. Now these knots I've got you tying, they are good to temporarily secure your tails and if you're giving this stocking to an adult and it's not intended as a family heirloom, you could probably trust these knots to keep it secure. However, if you're giving these stockings to a child or you really want them to last, I really recommend you sew the tails in as well once you finish the stocking. Round 23 is a normal half double crochet stripe round. Pause the video here and half double crochet around the circle, but unpause the video before you work the slip stitch. Finish round 23 by slip stitching with colour 1. Insert your hook under the top of the first half double crochet. Drop colour 2 for the last time. Pick up colour 1 and fold it. Hook colour 1 and pull it through the stitch and through the loop on your hook. Now you can cut colour 2. And you can tie the tail of colour 2 with the tail of colour 1. I just forgot to do that, so if you'd like to tie those knots you can. Then we can start round 24. Round 24 starts with some single crochet. Chain 1 to get up to height and place your first single crochet into that first space. And place one single crochet in each of the next four stitches. That should take you to the halfway point. Fold your stocking and check that it does because this is the point we're going to make our hanging loop from and you do want it to be in the middle. If you are at the halfway point you can make a chain. I'm going to chain 25. The length of your chain will determine the length of your hanging loop so make as long or as short a chain as you would like. Here's my chain of 25. I'm now going to attach it back to the stocking and I do that by single crocheting into the next stitch. And continue putting one single crochet into each stitch until you're back to the beginning of the round. Finish round 24 by slip stitching to the first single crochet. For round 25 we're going to continue slip stitching. Another four slip stitches should take you to the stitch immediately before the hanging loop. We've now reached that small gap. To close the gap slip stitch straight into the next single crochet. Now that we've closed the gap, we're going to strengthen this loop by slip stitching along the chain as well. To do that, just insert your hook into the chain. That's the first chain there. Catch one loop of it, yarn over and pull through the chain and pull through the loop on your hook. And do the same all the way up that chain. Now 
when you've slip stitched all the way down the chain, we need to join up again to the stocking. So slip stitch into this stitch again. This is the stitch we slip stitched into to close the gap. When you've done that, you can continue slip stitching around the stocking until you're back to the beginning of the round. Your loop should look like this. It should have a nice crossover effect. I'll leave you to work the rest of the slip stitches and I'll meet you at the end of the round to show you how I finish off the stocking. When you're back to the beginning of the round, we need to finish off. Of course, you can do that in whatever way you like, but my preferred method is an invisible join. And to do that, I need to cut my yarn and leave myself a bit of a tail so I have enough yarn left to sew the end in. I haven't chained one or anything. I'm just gonna slide the hook out, pulling the working loop out so I have a tail to thread onto my needle. If I was just gonna work another slip stitch to finish this stocking, I'd slip stitch into this stitch. When you work an invisible join, the rule is that you always go one stitch to the left of where you'd slip stitch. So I'll work the invisible join in this stitch here. Take your needle under both loops of the slip stitch, not the single crochet underneath it, the slip stitch from the last round, pull the yarn through. Now identify the last stitch you made, which is this slip stitch, and find the spot the yarn comes out of it, the middle of the stitch. Insert your needle there and take it out into the inside of the stocking. That's created something that looks very like another stitch. Now I need to weave the tail in well to make sure that that pretend stitch doesn't come undone as soon as someone picks up this stocking. You'll also need to weave in the other tails. Make sure you don't forget the magic circle at the toe. To secure a tail, you need to back stitch it at least three times. That's one stripy stocking finished. This one is for my mum. So in goes a chocolate bar and also her favorite hand cream. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you did, please click the thumbs up button or leave me a comment because I would love to know what color you chose for your stocking. I'll see you next time. Merry Christmas.